Does the ego dominate you? Always. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. What do they in call? Don't they call always. like in uh, uh, in sexual like uh, they have those? I, w- I don't want to say deviant, but those things like some people are into, and, and I'm not judging any of it at all. Like some people have different things that they love, you know. But they have like the dom mm-hmm. or something like yeah, that, yeah. and that's the guy the that yep. yeah, he's the dominant guy or whatever. And then the girl calls him the dom or whatever, mm-hmm. and then they like. I watched a whole show. It was so interesting. I think it was on Netflix. And it was like fetishes or something like that. And like this guy and girl, they were like totally in love, love each other. And they just had that like weird relationship. Well, we call it weird, but what is weird, you know? Yeah. Uh, but for them, for them, it was like she called him that. And then she would like call him out of the blue. And then he had to do things that she said, mm. you know, and then vice versa, you know. And it was just so wild. It was like, it's like to me, I would start laughing. If someone like asked if somebody you to do started that. like take your pants off, you know, like do this, do that, that's, you know, that's cause I would probably start laughing. That's because like, your just ego not, is not going to. Maybe submit. I'm boring in the sexual arena or something. Who knows? But uh, it, it's just so funny to me, you know, when when you think of the word dominant or mm-hmm. dominance, and now mm-hmm. I've got everybody thinking in a sexual way. But when I, I think of that word, it's like something that's that's got control mm. over you. It's dominating you. Yeah, you know, it's like. When when you watch uh, Michael Jordan in that great documentary, uh, I, I forgot what it was. The last, yeah, the, uh, last, the dance. last dance. He's dominating, like just absolutely next level on the court in his prime. Yep, with, and just running around all nine guys. I cannot ten guys. And I, just cannot, like, uh, I cannot. I cannot watch that. Well. I can't watch that and then not go play basketball. Yeah, exactly. I, <laughs> I run out my house with a basketball every time that comes on. You just see total domination. Yeah, yeah. He dominated his opponent. And, and when I think of the ego, it's the Michael Jordan of our brain. <laughs> Ex- perfect analogy. Perfect analogy. It's dominating my thoughts. It's dominating the way I navigate the world. It's dominating how I treat others. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, you were bringing up Calvin and Hobbes, and I was thinking while you were talking about that, I was thinking of the ego. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> and me. Well, and like Calvin, the real me and the, and yeah. the ego. Yeah. And Calvin is a five-year-old boy that's learning to navigate the world. And, in you know, often in, in, that, uh, in that comic series, they talk about Calvin Ball. You mm-hmm. want to play Calvin Ball? Well, it's like, these are the rules. It's like, no, no, no. As soon as I start losing, I'm going to change the rules so that I can win again. That's the ego. And that's yeah. exactly what the ego does. The ego just with denial and self deception. I don't have to look at that. Oh, we can make it different. No, it's, it's change the rules right now. That's not important anymore. So, so Calvin and Hobbes would kind of be like a perfect representation of, of you fighting your ego. Yeah. And then Hobbes is there, you know, kind of guiding Calvin along the, the yes, better path. Yeah. That would be a spiritual representation of, you know what, you're not in alignment with your vertical dimension. Right. You probably don't want to shoot, shoot the slingshot through the neighbor's window. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but that's how we learn. I was totally, I was a Calvin Hobbes kid all the way. Yeah, it's so wild. And so I want to, uh, this is part two, so I encourage people to go to, we're in module 3.1, Unraveling the Ego. And we got into a little bit of the denial and self-deception and how the ego engages that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and how it always wants to, keyword, preserve our self-image. So mm-hmm. when I think of preservation, you know, um, I used to do, uh, I had a farm back in the day and, and um, we would do preservation in the sense of canning. Yeah. So you would get cucumbers and, or tomatoes and you could make tomato sauce and salsa. You could do so many different things. Cucumbers, green beans, like you name it. So you could just go grab a can anytime you wanted. You'd pull it off the, the canning shelves, you know, and then you would have meat from your, you know, your cows, your pigs, chickens, whatever. And so you could always make a big meal. Like you always had potatoes and, you know, all that stuff. And I th- it was a way to preserve that vegetable because that vegetable would be rotten mm. in a couple of weeks. Like I can, we both eat a lot of avocados. Yeah. I can leave an avocado out and it's done in a week. Yep. Now I could put it in the refrigerator and I can get two weeks, two and a half weeks. The refrigerator preserves the avocado. I also think of a, a life preserver. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, I'm in the sea. I'm in the stormy sea. I don't know what's going on. There's a ship. I see a light. I'm drowning. That life preserver gets thrown out. That's the window of grace. But that life preserver gets thrown out at me, 
And the li- why do they call it a life preserver? It's preserving my life. Mm-hmm. It's a mechanism that preserves. It's keeping it possible. The canning system preserves that vegetable. Yes. You know, the boiling, the jars, the lids, the ceiling, the vacuuming, all that stuff. So when, I, when we think of denial and self-deception, those are tools that the ego uses to preserve our self-image. So now I want us to get into this. Yes. The self-image is false. Yes, yes. It's, it's the part of me that's selfish. It's the part of me that is delusional. It's also the part of me that hurts others. It causes harm. How can I preserve being in that behavior? The ego uses denial and self-deception as a catalyst for me to continue that type of conduct. What's that uh, game that's like you can like drag cars and pull women out of cars? It's kind of... Oh, Grand Theft Auto? Yes, yeah. I always think of my ego, like the self-deception. <laughs> oh, dear, just... it's, my ego's running around like Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> tearing apart. <laughs> it's just tearing city. the world up. <laughs> all the cops That's my self-image. are on the way. <laughs> yeah, all of them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm stealing. I'm stealing. I'm lying. I'm cheating. My self-image, what I have built to the world to preserve, here's what it is, to preserve myself mm-hmm. in this level, not in this level. Right. In, in form is for me to do whatever I need to do to survive. And that if that means me telling Dwayne a little white lie, you know, I can't work out today, bro. I'm like, you know, not just not feeling well or, you know, oh, I was late to work. Uh, I, I wasn't being disrespectful. The reality is I was being disrespectful to my work and to my boss and to everybody. And instead, what I chose to do is wake up late, be lazy. Mm hmm. Um, and then be reactive to everything and made the decision to be late. I made that decision. Yes. But instead, I'm going to blame everything else all around. So what I want to get into is the self-image. The sel- if the self-image is false, what is the ego really trying to preserve? Nothing. A it's delusion. a false. It's just whole, it, the it, whole thing is yeah, fucked up. It's trying to preserve a lie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and if I'm trying to preserve a lie, my foundation is built on sand. Mm, yes. I, 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 ha- I crumble. I crumble yes. under pressure. I, I don't know how to navigate the world. I don't know how to deal with hard shit. Yes. I don't know how to go through that type of stuff. When life happens, as it has a way of doing, I crumble. Mm. I never, my, my, my dad's parents passed away. I wasn't even out of high school yet, but I, my, I was well into my drinking career. I never mourned them. I never had an opportunity to be present for their death. I just turned to the bottle. I remember being there, and you know, I've, I've made the appropriate amends to them in a way that works well for me so that I feel forgiveness and healing took place years later. Do you think it was an um, excuse to get, dive into the bottle more? It was, it, it was just all I knew to do. Mm. It was how I had to preserve myself. I didn't have any other way to deal with the hand... Life dealt me at that mm. moment. And it's delusional because I don't have to look at how hurtful that was, not only to them, not only to my dad, um, but also to the spirit inside of me. Yeah, it's almost like when I see this self-image and self-deception, what you're saying, how you were talking to yourself, it's almost when I see Trump or Biden standing up there. You know, I always say I'm not right wing or left wing, I'm throwing a whole bird out. Um you know what they're saying is not real. Mm. Like either one of them, most politicians, 99.9% of them tell you a great speech and don't do shit. Sure. You know, and you know that all of them have money. They all don't have much, well, maybe besides Trump, but they all don't have a lot of money going into the thing. And then they come out where it being worth hundreds of millions. Yeah. It's like, how does that work? Yeah. Where does this money come from? Who is telling me to say what? And it's so funny because we watch them. It's like WWE wrestling, WWF, whatever. You watch them. You know it's fake. Yes. But it's still so entertaining. We watch a movie. We know they're acting. And we're crying. Mm. This is, they, there's like, cut, 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 cut. Scene's good. You know, we're on to the next scene. Green screen. We're green screen up. 
There's the, the raccoon movie, Gardens of the Galaxy, the new one. Every I haven't seen it yet, but everybody's telling me that. You know, it's super sad, and people are crying in the theater. And I'm like, the whole movie's done on a green screen. But guess who gets emotional in movies? Me. Yeah. My dumb ass gets really emotional. <laughs> I have to, like, kind of hide, and I don't know why I'm ashamed of it, but I can. A, a Disney movie can get me emotional. Oh, yeah. Well, the storytelling generationally, evolutionally, is how we have evolved as human beings. So movies are just a great extension of storytelling. But I understand the point you're making with that's not real. Mm -mm. That's not real. How come I'm treating it like it's everything? <laughs> there you go. That's the that's most it. important thing in my universe. And in reality, it's not even real. That's how powerful my ego is. That's how powerful my delusional thoughts are. If... I'm identified with the thoughts. The ego can only exist in the mind. It has a proper place. It is necessary. I'm never going to get rid of my ego. But when it's out of control, when it's unchecked, like we talked about last podcast, I don't know I'm separate from these thoughts. Yeah, it's so funny. It reminds me, I, I was watching the whole fiasco right now with, uh, Conor McGregor. Mm, I don't right. know if you heard all that, but it's like in, it was like one night or two nights in Miami, and he's like, you know, next thing you know, he's like beats up a, and I don't know how, I, I don't know the whole circumstances, but what, and the news could be false, so this whole story could be like whatever. But what I was reading and what I heard, and I, I listened to a podcast a little bit on it, because um, I like a little bit of MMA, I think it's kind of entertaining and fun, um, was, you know, he punched out the mascot you know, during the game or whatever. And the mascot got hurt, I guess, and went to the hospital, you know, because he's beating it up. I don't know if you saw it. And then he went to a club and then he brought a girl in the bathroom, you know, and he's married and he's getting his fourth kid coming on, coming along, you know, and I don't know whether they have an agreement or something, who knows, but, um, you know, here he is, top of the world. Yep. Most popular MMA fighter, king of the world. Anything he's ever decided to do, he does and does it. Yep. And he tells everybody to fuck off and he does it. He took a whiskey that wasn't that even that good. Yeah. And made a billion dollars off of Proper it. Proper 12. Yeah, and made a billion dollars <laughs> off of it. You know, yeah, so he's a powerful creator. And then he goes to Miami and he's not like helping charities or yeah. doing and he may, I don't know, but I always see him on his yacht and stuff like that, which is great, you know, be hang out on your yacht, have fun. But it's so funny, it's like here's this person that is not knowing how to act in this reality. Mm. The only reality I've ever known is to fight. Yes. And scrape and get through and move on. And now I have all of this abundance. Yes, yes, yes. And I don't know how to be responsible. And it's all of a sudden, I have an addiction personality and I don't know what to do. I've finally got a job. I finally got, I'm at, I was at level one killing myself. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been there and you've been there. I was at level one killing myself. Then I got to level two, and now I'm going to fuck it up and go back to level one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Classic ULP, upper mm -hmm. limit problem. I don't know how to experience a leap in vibration. I'm so conditioned to this heartache. I'm so conditioned to this delusional existence. I'm so conditioned to having to struggle through it. Life's supposed to be hard. Didn't you know making money's supposed to be hard? <laughs> I'm supposed to effort, effort, efforting. That's the same as swimming up, upstream. And once I make a leap to a higher vibrational existence, that resonance might feel kind of weird. Mm -hmm. And subconsciously, like Connor just did in Florida, I might do something to screw that up. Yes. What can I do to drop myself back down to my normal level of existence so that I feel okay? It's a little bit insane. Actually, it's very insane, but it's normal. If I'm living in plane one, plane two, level number one, level number two, situation, energetic response, that's my whole life. I don't know that I'm separate from those things. Then those things dominate me. And it's very normal to behave in my unconscious ego and go back to where I feel at, uh, 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 comfortable. And it's crazy to say that. It's crazy to say, I feel uncomfortable having to struggle. Yeah, I remember uh, Christian Bale. Mm -hmm. you know, yes, same classic, scenario. classic yeah. Batman. It, yes, and, and just amazing. 
to me, he's the best. I like him the best out of all of them. This last guy is pretty good too. I like all. Oh the yeah, um, they've all done great. But um, you know, he's getting ready to win an award. One of the highest grossing films ever. And he's in a hotel room with his mom <laughs> and sister. You think you're fine. You would think. You would think. <laughs> but I don't know how to experience this much love, abundance, and success. Domestic violence <laughs> case with his mom and sister. And it's an, an ULP, upper limit problem, usually comes on the heels of a great success or victory mm-hmm. or a good time. We both have big events coming up in our life. And um, now I'm looking out for ULPs. I'm traveling out of country next week. I'm very excited. I get to honor that experience with my wife and have a good time. And I'm just like worried about spending $40 at the grocery store. (laughs) ULPs are coming to get me. But it's my job to just observe the ULP, Mm -hmm. see it for what it is. What is that? Is that real? Or is that a a lack-based thought? Is that a low vibration thought? That's not real. That's just a crazy thought. Well, you said before, and it's so... And it really hit me when you said it last podcast was, and it's such a basic statement. We've heard it so many times is the universe gives you what you are. The universe gives you what you are. And, and so if I'm complaining about 40 bucks, then I'm going to be struggling for $40. Then you're the type of person that's going to worry about 40 bucks. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yes. And so I'm going to just have $40 all the time. Correct. Yeah. You right. know, so, so a trip to out of country and me worrying about the money, I'm not that person. <clears throat> no, I don't. I don't know how to experience that type of existence i need to drop back down to the level of vibration i'm used to and Mm -hmm. what i'm used to is my addiction i'm used to worrying about this i'm used to my fear i'm used to my lack yeah and this goes right along and it says this listen to this part this deflection can create significant barriers to change and healing so let's talk about deflection (laughs) <laughs> I couldn't possibly take responsibility for this. It's not my fault that this stuff costs $40. Yeah. It's freaking Walmart's fault yes. because they hiked their prices up, and now I'm the victim of it's society. It's COVID's fault. It's this, it's that. It's, 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 it's the politicians. No, it's our yes. supply chain. I'm just a victim of society that yeah. has uh, inflation, and how dare they? My yeah, toilet yeah. paper. Inflation is just a tax. My toilet us, paper. Yeah. I don't even need toilet paper. Fuck it. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> That's it's, deflection. That's how crazy we get in an ego-controlled mind that is incapable of taking responsibility. You know what our response is to inflation? <laughs> Make more money. Get 100%. your ass off the couch and get busy. And, and that's, that's taking responsibility for me, myself, and my family. I just have to stop working because things went through the roof price-wise. Fuck that. I'm going to work double, triple. Yeah, I was listening to Rob Deerdick, the skater guy, mm-hmm. but he's yeah, like fantastic. a billionaire now. And he, he has like great spiritual teachings. You guys should follow him. And he's like, I love living in Beverly Hills. Yeah. My family loves it. School systems are great. Everything's great. I can afford it. I like going to the Ferrari dealership. My wife likes, you know, doing all these amazing things. He goes, I love Beverly Hills. Yeah, I pay 40%, 50% taxes. I just need to make 40 or 50% more. Yep. Because I'm not moving. <laughs> and I love that. That's yeah. so great. Take Where most people be like, you know what? You know, I need to move I'm so I move. can save and then... Yeah, so powerful. But that's the deflection. That's mm-hmm. the, I couldn't possibly take responsibility mm-hmm. for my life and what's happening to me. Let me sidestep this and make it somebody else's responsibility. Do you, so do you remember, it was the first or second Captain America movie. And he's on a ship. And the, it starts out like hardcore action, like in a good way. I love those. Like I love all the Marvel movies. And it's a shield in him. Yeah. And that shield is just going through like a hundred guys. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Like a, it's like a, almost like a John Wick movie, but with this shield. And the Captain America shield, to me, is a perfect reflection of deflection. Because <laughs> <laughs> I could just hold this thing and deflect everything. I, I, could, I can hold, my ego can hold this ego shield and be like, you know what? My mom, this is the reason why I, I'm a drug addict. Mm. Oh, you know what? My dad abused me. Oh, this is the reason why I can't hold a job down. Oh, you know what? I can, I, I'm not good at math just because I've never been good at math. You know, yes. like I, t- I say that yes. all the time. It's like, well, I'm just not good at math. I, I'm not going to learn Excel. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, with Excel sheets every day. And I'm like, I'm not going to learn this because I am not good at formulas and math. So I'm going to 
outsource it to somebody else, which is fine if you don't want to do something, outsource it to somebody else. But it's like, I could probably in a few hours learn it. You definitely could learn it. The, the deflection, the, the, I'm deflecting the responsibility. Yes, there you go. Yeah, that's what I'm using my shield of ego to do. Mm-hmm. The ego shields me from the outside world that is constantly calling me to responsibility. The, the, the paradox is, is when I answer the call to responsibility, I start getting a life worth living. That's so funny. You brought up the Marvel, the Marvel uh, films, bro. I've shared this story with you, but it's a good story to tell it again. Uh, 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 I work at a gym and I work out. I have a, a seven o'clock hour. That's my hour. I dedicate that time for me in the gym. I don't take clients at that time. I'm going to take care of myself for one hour and the rest of the day I serve. So I'm there in the gym and this guy comes in that I've never seen at the gym before, this bald guy. And, uh, He's kind of moving around a little viciously and he's doing shadow boxing and he's moving weights really fast. And he's just he's throwing me off. And I'm a decorated champion bodybuilder. Like, I don't compete with me, bro. Don't come in here at my gym and try and dance around me. And my ego is just sneaking up. And my ego wants to be superior. And my ego wants to judge. And my ego wants to hold this guy down. Because it was an anomaly to the system. I'd never seen him before. My circuitry, my circuitry went off deep, deep in my, my, my subconscious where I viewed this guy as a predator. He was a threat to me. He's doing a whole different workout. And, and, and he's completely different from me. I'm separate, separate. So my ego and my deflection of taking responsibility for my judgment of this person was just forefront. I was pure form and I was superior and screw this guy. I was doing abs on a bench and he was near me and he's doing a shadow boxing thing. And my brain said, this mother, he needs to get away from me now. I sat up, not three seconds later, he came over in front of me, looked me in the eye and gave me a fist bump and said, looking good, my brother, and walked away. He, he wanted to be my brother mm-hmm. and told me I looked good. Simultaneously, in the same moment, I'm judging him, saying he needs to get away from me so now. So you're Cain and he's Abel. <laughs> <laughs> he was my ideal. Your sacrifice, his sacrifice was a good He enough. just wanted to, be, I, was hating what I, I was hating myself in that moment. Right, I was right. hating what I already am. He just wanted to be my brother. And I had already thrown him out of the kingdom of heaven. Get the hell away from me. In that moment, bro, I just, I, I felt so crushed. I put my head down and I hid my tears. Because I don't want to be the type of man that just judges someone for existing. Mm-hmm. I hadn't done that in a long time. Right. And I, was, I, I, I felt so embarrassed about how forefront my ego was in that moment. I was working at an upscale restaurant at the time. Not two weeks later, the same person came upstairs. And I made it a point to have a present moment practice with this individual every time I saw him at the gym after that. We became good little buddies at the gym. I would always give him a fist bump. He'd give me a fist bump. We talked, and I, I, I felt that that judgment inside of me was removed for this individual, and he gave, me, he gave me a gift. He gave me a gift in that moment to be spirit first instead of ego first because when I was ego first, it felt horrible. He came upstairs where I was working at this upscale restaurant and I'm talking with him and his brother and I said, so what are you doing, man? Tell me what you do. I know you're here like in town, but not permanently. What is it that you do? He's like, oh, I'm I'm like kind of semi-retired. I was like, what do you mean retired, bro? Like, there's no way you're 40. What do you mean you're retired? He was like, ah, you know, I do real estate stuff, but I, I, you know, I dabbled in like uh, producing and I don't do that anymore. And his brother nudged him and his brother said, tell him, tell him. And he said, well, you know, I've, I produced 24 Marvel movies and I don't really need to work anymore. And this dude <laughs> is multimillionaire. He has an Emmy on his mantle in his living room from the Marvel series that he's helped produce. And I'm there assassinating him in the gym because my ego is forefront. 
because my ego is delusional, because my ego can't take responsibility for the judgments in my head. I mean, think about uh, how many times there's been a misunderstanding and we've put that. I was, this is so funny because I was talking to somebody earlier today about this. I was like, we've created avatars of what we think people are. Yes. And we don't even know them. Uh, even if we know somebody, we really don't know them. I don't know what you think. No. I've never been in your brain. I have an avatar of what I think Dwayne is. Yes. But I really, 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 like, deep down, don't know you. I don't know what you're struggling with. I mean, we talk pretty openly, you know, at the gym and stuff of stuff we're struggling with or stuff we're working on, spiritual stuff. But I don't, I don't know, know, know you. Like, I, you I know never you. know what someone else is thinking. And all I know is the avatar of Dwayne that I've created. Mm. And my ego's part in that. And hopefully my higher self is part in that you know, to create, to love you, to be um, to the point to where I can be totally accepting, no judgment, you know, all of those things. And that's what I really try to do with people that, you know, that I want to be a friend with or close with or whatever. But I don't really, I have avatars. You know, it's not the real person. And I, I was telling this, this person was talking about a relationship and I, and I was like, you don't know. Mm. you're guessing you're getting upset and emotional based off an assumption that you think that this person is thinking about you. Yes. Yeah. 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 And now you guys are arguing over each other about the avatar, but you're, <laughs> but so the avatar you've created doesn't live up to the judgment that you've put on the avatar because you've created this person to act this way, but that's not the real person. A real human's pretty fucked up. And a great way to understand that, which I, that's why I love the Bible so much, is because it's open. Mm -hmm. The Bible shows the flaws. Oh, yeah. King David was a man after God's own heart. Like, yeah. And yeah. adultery, murder. I mean, the list goes on Especially and on. Especially the Old Testament. Yeah, yeah. It's, Old Testament is intense, and they're never painted as <laughs> No, as no one is people. Moses. Yeah, yeah. 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 He didn't even screwed. have enough courage to help his wife, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody was out. His wife must have been good looking or whatever, or... Was that Abraham or Moses? I forgot who it was. Abraham. But, and yeah, Abraham and then, lied to... Yeah, and then he was going to kind of give up sister. his wife up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You could have her. Go ahead, take her. <laughs> Just don't kill me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then you see that with all the disciples denying Jesus mm -hmm. in the time. You know, and we always think, oh, I'm the man. I could... You know, I would have stood up and I should have been crucified next to Jesus. And everybody's like, nope, I'm nope, out of here. You Whoop. wouldn't, yeah. And then si simultaneously, it's like uh, Jordan Peterson and his the studying of... The ego and how far that can be taken to an extreme mm -hmm. in the 20th century. Nazi Germany. Mm -hmm. And everyone wants to say, no, I'd be the one that stood up and said, no, that's wrong. And it's like, you're going to stand up. You're going to say, no, you and your family all get machine gunned. That's you. Prove it. It's important to know that that's where my ego can take me and how easily I can get there. How easily I can turn a blind eye. Mm-hmm to the destruction and horror that we're capable of producing. Oh, we do it all the time. We make compromises mm. to better our ego all the time. And this is, so the deflection can create significant barriers to change and healing. So when you think of significant barriers in your life before you felt extreme change or before you felt extreme healing, what do you think those barriers were? Like, I always think of, like, a highway, and then they put barriers up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, what do you think yeah, those yeah, yeah. barriers were for you not, when you were unconscious, not to change in healing? Yeah. It's important to understand that that's on the other side of the barrier. What's yeah. on the other side of this bar of this blockage? Mm -hmm. Well, change in healing is on the other side of yes. that. So what do I have to, what's this, bar bar the biggest barrier for me and for most addicts, I would, I would take a leap, you know, and guess and say is, is fear. Is fear. Fear, fear I often viewed as a, like a concrete wall, exactly like a barrier. And I don't know how to get through a concrete wall. It's going to hurt mm -hmm. trying to go through this concrete wall. But if I don't want to die drunk or if I don't want to behave in my unconscious addiction anymore, if I don't want to be the type of man that is so selfish, I constantly harm others to get what I want, 
I have to be willing to take a different approach to life. I have to be willing to go through some fear. I've been down Dwayne's path 10 million times. I know every turn in the forest. I know every rock. I know where every bottle is. I know where all the women are. I know where the lack of fear, the lack of money fear is. I've been down that path 10 million times. But when I'm asked to go down a new path, a spiritual path where I'm walking in faith, I don't know the turns on that path. Mm -hmm. I don't know the rocks in that forest. I don't know what's down around the next bend. It takes courage approaching a new direction in life. It takes courage to walk a new path. But when I have the courage and I tap into the God consciousness inside of me that can make that possible, that can make a new journey possible, I find out that this concrete barrier is kind of more like a curtain. My fear was a lot more like a curtain Mm. than a concrete wall. And I can step through a curtain. That's the imagery in my mind. I step through a, a, a curtain into a new forest, onto a new trail, onto a new path. I could step through a curtain, bro. I could fucking walk around a curtain. So you think that not only the ego being a bully with fear, but it was a gas lighting you with fear. Absolutely. Stay small. Stay small. Don't try that. No, no, no. We're, fear, fear, fear. What, we, what we're doing, we know it works. I know a bottle works like that. I know a fight works like that. I instantly feel different. Those are old condition patterns for me to get control to stay small, to, to not heal. The, what's on the other side of that curtain? Change in healing. So change in healing is fearful. Yeah. Well, well, absolutely. Especially if I've never done it before. But all men of faith have courage. Mm, yes. All men of faith have courage. It doesn't matter what I have faith in. It just matters that I start behaving as such. Can I act in a way I believe I'm going to be taken care of? What's taking care of me? The God consciousness inside of me that's eternal. It's not subject to life or death. It doesn't even die. But I'm worried about spending $4.30 at Walmart for spinach because I have a conditioned fear of money. It's, it's crazy. It's delusional. But we're very interested in going beyond our addiction. We're very interested in evolving past that. What's the next existence beyond that? What's this new journey? Yeah, and I, I want to kind of get into insights um, from some spiritual leaders. Just We're going to briefly go over those, yeah, and then we'll go into um, the disillusion of the ego, um, especially in addiction recovery. Uh, Carl Jung, one of the, and I encourage everybody to look him up, uh, he believed that addiction could be viewed as a misguided spiritual search. Mm. And so I, I think, and that he, said, he suggested that recovery requires acknowledging our shadow self. The aspect that we deny or ignore. So your shadow self is anything that you're not going to share with anyone else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So your shadow self is that part of you that you may not like, that super scary part of you. Like there's like you're not going to share with your mate. You're not going to share. And we all have it. Oh, yeah. Whether we have, uh, uh, it's like, I'd really like to kill that person, you know, or Mm -hmm. or I'd really like to, um, you know, whatever it may be. Like whatever the part of us that, we're not willing to share with somebody else because he says that's the key to the understanding the shadow self. It's because we always see the shadow self like I'll share some things with you, Dwayne. Like I get pretty personal with you. Yep. But there are a few things I'm not going to share with anyone. Yeah, they'll take it to the grave stuff. Yeah, yeah, take it to the grave stuff. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's the shadow self. And if we deny or ignore it, um, he says we have to acknowledge it, bring loving awareness to it, and then integrate it with our consciousness. To achieve, and he uses a word, and I think it's it's really good, individuation. Um, and Rudolf Steiner talks about this too. But he said it creates a psychological wholeness. Mm. Because, you know, as above, so below, the dark and the light, the yin and the yang. I mean, that's a spiritual principle everywhere. The seasons in life, uh, seasons, you see a tree lose its leaves and then gets them and grows, you know, and then, you know, you, you see death and, and reborn, you know, babies and people, old people die. All of this, we could see it in creation. We see it in life. We see this whole process of acknowledging. Yes. And 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 I hate to say this. This sounds really bad when I say this, and a lot of people are going to disagree with me on this. But there's nothing really bad or good, you know. Like, and you're like, 
you don't know what happened to me, Jason. A lot of bad shit's happened to me too. I mean, I could share some things with you that blow people's brains off, mm -hmm. you know, about some super horrific things that happened to me, especially when I was younger. Yeah. But at the end of the day, was it bad? Mm. You know, am I going to be a victim to it or right. am I going to have it as a learning lesson for me to understand that it's not me? Just because something was done to me mm -hmm. doesn't mean that it's me. That's powerful. You, you know what I mean? Or something that I did to somebody else, because we've all done horrific things to people. Yeah. And we've all had horrific things happen to us. Every human has. That's very You're powerful. You're not special. Another <laughs> people way, think they're yeah. so special. <laughs> you are not unique. It, oh, that's great, bro. You are not unique in your suffering. Mm -hmm. You are unique in how you show up to it. If I can take responsibility for my perspective of the situation, if I have a separateness, if I'm separate from the situation, then it wasn't good or bad. It just is. It just happened. Yeah, and, and everybody thinks that their thing is so unique and individual and so horrific. I was reading a, an article about North Korea mm. and women that defect from North Korea and they have to go through, it's horrific with dealing with the weather. So they finally make it. And they get the, you know, the, the, the route they usually go is to China. Guess what happens? When somebody sees this lone, super frail woman and they instantly know she's from North Korea, sex slave. Mm -hmm. It's like 80 or 90% of women that leave North Korea, leave a horrific life where they're eating rats and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I, I listened to that one, uh, Yomi Park or whatever her name is, that defected and she's here in the United States now. She was like in the hospital sick feeling and she was watching the rats eat dead people in the ward of the hospital where Jeez. the beds were somebody would die and then at nighttime she would hear rats eating the body and then people were starving in the hospital so they were eating the rats because that's common practice they eat rats and right. they were eating the rats and the rats had the diseases on the people so it was killing those people so it's just so you think it's bad Right, yeah, yeah. You think you got it tough. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's horrific. Yeah, so, you know, put things into perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we've all have David and Goliaths in our life. But the Goliath can be slayed. We see that in that story. Yes. David went to that stream, picked up those small little stones. He got a little slingshot, and he slew the warrior of the world, yeah. the giants. Like, back in those days, they had giants. They've even proven this, you know. They've had they, this giant, this warrior that had killed thousands of people. Boom. But that's also he a hero. found the vulnerable. That, that's, the hero, that's the hero myth as yes. well. That's the hero story. Yes. I have to go into the wilderness and slay the dragon. Mm -hmm. What's the dragon? Well, very cool. We were talking about this earlier at the gym, you know. Um, evolutionary evolutionally, yeah. evolutional psychology. What's been eating primates for millions of years? Snakes, cats, and birds. We've talked about this before. Now, what's the amalgamation of a snake, a cat, and a bird? It's the ultimate predator. It's a dragon. And I have to be willing to go into the wilderness, confront the dragon, and that's what Young is talking about when he's talking about shadow self. What's the dragon? Is it real? Is there really a dragon out in my backyard? <laughs> no, it's the shadow in my mind that I've been so afraid to look at, that I've been so afraid to take responsibility for those crazy thoughts. What's the only thing a monster is not afraid of? Another monster. Mm -hmm. I got to turn a little bit into a monster in order to walk into that wilderness. I got to grow some fucking teeth and take responsibility for the fear in my mind. And when I walk through that fear, I realize I don't even have it that bad. Yeah, I'm I, definitely I, not in a hospital bed dying. Yeah, and I always think of Witcher. Yeah. He's part monster. Yeah. You have so to who's be, a monster fighter? You have to be He's part monster, monster fighter, yeah. if you're going to confront the monster of your mind. Yeah, and I love Rudolf Steiner. I've been reading a lot of his. I've got three books over there of him um, that I just bought. Steiner's teachings underscore the need for overcoming ego-driven consciousness to attain spiritual transformation. And he talks about it's an idea that aligns with uh, Jung's notion of individuation. But 
this overcoming the ego driven conscious. And that's what he calls it. And I love the word that it's driving the car. Mm, yeah. Yeah. It has control. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When, when my ego is in the driver's seat, I've proven it to myself <laughs> over and over again. I'm crash and burn. Mm -hmm. Like my ego is not a good pilot. It's just not. It's a great co-pilot. Mm. But it's a really it's crappy, shitty. <laughs> really shitty pilot. We crash and burn every time. I might like, you know, coast for a while. But eventually my control and my selfishness run people over and I crash the vehicle mm, yes, I'm yes. trying to get through the world with. Get through this world with. If God is forefront, if vertical dimension is first, that's who I want flying the plane. That's mm. who I want driving. That's my pilot. I need to get in touch with the part of myself that is the pilot of a successful life. Yeah, I always said that, that bumper navigate. sticker. Like it says, God is my co-pilot. And my dad would always say that because my dad was pretty religious, you know, Baptist, all mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. But I always like what he said. He's like, that's not the true. That's backwards. Yeah, he said, God is your pilot and mm -hmm. you're the co-pilot. You're the co -pilot. I'm, I'm a really great co-pilot. Yes, yeah, exactly. And I, I really love that analogy. So whether it's God, ourself, universe, yes. whatever, they're the pilot. What does that look like? We've talked about it before. That looks like surrendering my control. I don't need to control the ship. I don't need to mm. fly the plane. God, you fly it. Universe, you fly it. I am prepared to deal with whatever comes. But that comes, that's because I have a spiritual practice. That's because I have a conscious, aware checklist to get me through the day. I know I can handle life when it gets tough because I'm connected to God. Mm -hmm. it, where does all source generate from? The present moment. Where does God live? The present moment. Why can I tap into infinite source, all power, and get through hard shit? Because yeah, I love I'm that. connected to the present moment. So in, the moment, in, that, in that scenario, in that co-pilot scenario, I'm honoring the present moment. I'm honoring the perfect objective, which is of God, and I'm heading in that direction. That's so good. I know I'll never be perfect, but that's the direction I want to head in. Yeah, and let's get into, uh, for the last few minutes, ego dissolution and addiction recovery. Um, so we talked about dominance early, earlier, but dissolving the ego's dominance allows us to confront our addiction without deflection or denial, seeing it as a harmful habit rather than a fundamental part of our identity. Mm. Mm, that's good. It's huh? just a bad habit. It's not who I am. Mm -mm. That's a crazy thought. It's not who I am. Oh, there's another crazy thought. Oh, there's another. It happens 58,000 times a day initially. So we have to get very good at spotting the thought. It's almost like uh, another analogy is just catch it, uh, fishing. Mm -hmm. Catch and release. Catch the crazy thought, release it. It's not who I am. Catch the crazy thought, release it. It's not who I am. It's dissolving the ego's dominance. I'm not going to get rid of the ego per se, but I can release its control over my identity. Yes, 100%. It's no longer dominating my life. It's no longer steering the boat. Yeah, that's so good. And, and it says seeing it as a harmful habit rather than a fundamental part of my identity. The seeing is the hard part. Yes. Because when you're blind, then you're going off of the other senses take, you know, like physically they, they've said that with somebody that's blind and maybe we have somebody listening that's blind and they could better explain this, but... They, they always talk about, like, um, if you can't see, then all of a sudden your nose, your right. hearing, the other senses take control. Yeah, they'll see for you. Yeah, exactly. And I always think of, of this is if I'm looking, if I'm not looking and seeing, then I'm allowing other things to take control, and I'm mm. relying on those other things that are harmful to me to whether it's a bottle or whether it's a needle, whatever it may be, I'm relying those things to reinforce my false identity. Very good, yeah. Yeah, that's my a, a delusional existence mm -hmm. as an addict. Seeing it as a harmful habit, you know, there's a progression to all spiritual development, of course, and we will continue 
that progression. It's a lifetime endeavor that is, is constantly changing and evolving, and there's a progression to that. But initially, initially, for most issues, especially ego delusionment, I can't see the truth, my ego is in control, we kind of get that little window of grace where we realize, okay, something needs to change here. Something needs to happen differently in order for me to heal. And then that ego, same ego part of me takes over and says, I'll do it. Yes. I'll change us. 100%. I'll change us. Oh, we need to change. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'll answer. And, uh, and uh, it's still selfish. It's still controlling. And what ends up happening is I fall on my face. <laughs> because, because, and I don't change 100%. because I'm still behaving selfishly. I'm not really killing myself with alcohol anymore, but I'm destroying every relationship I touch because you're not behaving the way I need you to behave in order for me to be okay. And you just bounce from yes. a job, so a I just, relationship, whatever I just it is. shift my addiction to the next thing. And well, what my addiction really is is it's selfish and controlling. I want control. I want to dominate not only myself but others. So seeing it is the same as shining laser point awareness. Which part of me has laser point awareness? God consciousness. So if I can shine laser point awareness on this delusion, shine laser point awareness on this selfishness, shine laser point awareness on this sin, it's not my ego trying to fix itself, I'm now inviting the appropriate power into the situation that's going to give me a real chance to heal. So we like to say that the problem is not solved. The problem of, of my delusion, the problem of my selfishness, the problem of my dishonesty, that problem is not solved. When I bring laser point awareness to the situation, those parts of my character begin to dissolve it becomes to it begins to fall it just kind of falls to the side it's dissolved like an alka seltzer it just it just kind of fizzes out because now i'm seeing it mm -hmm. because now i'm shining laser point awareness on it god makes that possible duane and and his ego can't do that what did you say at the gym earlier today about if it was right and easy yeah, that uh, Alex Hormel uh, or Hormozy or whatever his name was, he was talking about that. He goes, it was so good. He had a short. I, I, I encourage people to follow him. And he was talking about if it's if it was easy and right, you would have already done it. You, I would have already done so it. So when you're deba in a debate between what's easy and what's hard, always pick the hard. Mm. Because you got to go for the hard. Because if it was just easy and right, you would have already done it. Yeah. If that makes sense. So so if it's just easy, then that's you're probably taking a shortcut or you're being lazy or you're not handling it in the way that you should by doing the hard thing. And the hard thing and he talks about that too. Hard things are hard things. Just accept them. Yeah. The minute you begin to accept like this is gonna suck, this is gonna be really hard. Most people don't do hard things. I'm gonna do hard things. I've got an addiction. I like to take the bottle, I like to take a needle, I like uh men or women or whatever and use their bodies, whatever it may be. I'm going to do the hard thing, and it's going to be hard. But this is the way it goes. Listen to this. Seeing it as a harmful habit rather than a fundamental part of identity, as we silence, so seeing and silence, as we silence the ego, we become open to accept, help change, and grow. And I want you to talk about this because I had talked about this in the gym. We always have these great conversations in the gym where we're working out. But yeah. we silence the ego. Um, and I was telling you earlier about physical, physiological changes. Mm -hmm. And as a child... The monster in the closet, the monster in the bed. Yes. And how it changes your body. But I want us to think of, of higher self, and I want us to think of God. And I want to picture dad. So you're sitting there freaking yourself out, even to the point of your body changing. You're in pure terror. Yeah. And, and everybody can remember this as a child, because most everybody's been afraid at some point. Pure terror. You have given yourself pure, absolutely pure terror, because you have convinced yourself that in that closet is a big one-eyed purple monster that's super hairy and scary. Monsters, Inc. is really funny with that. Yep, yep. Um, great, great movie. I love that one. But you've convinced yourself this thing is going to come out of the closet any moment. You've even kind of maybe even saw the door move a little bit. You've heard a noise. 
in there, you've convinced yourself of all this false reality. You're <sighs> finally you get enough courage. Help. <sighs> Hell. And then guess what happens? Dad comes running in, flips the light on. What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? You know, half tired. You know, he's trying to get some sleep. And you're like, oh, the monster in my closet. And he, what is the first thing dad does? With the light on, he opens the door and you look in the closet and there's your shoes, your clothes. No monster. There's no monster. It's the same. God or herself is the dad. Mm. He's the one that will, if you're willing to see, he's the one that comes in and silences the ego because he flips the light on and opens the door. So powerful. If you shines know what I mean. Light. Yeah, yeah. Literally shines the light. <laughs> Literally, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, not to get too into any religion, but that's a wonderful starting place. People will say and often judge, oh, well, I don't like that big bearded man in the sky, and I don't believe, no, no, that doesn't work. And it's perfectly fine if it doesn't work for individuals. We just suggest that you find a pathway to spirituality that works for you. But this idea of a powerful, judgmental father figure in the sky, Mm -hmm. That's a great starting off place. That's a great, okay, well, maybe I'll do this because that judgmental father in the future, it's going to be, it, it knows it's better for me in the future. If I start addressing my fear, if I start addressing my addiction, if I start having an aim, what's, we human, be, human beings are the only creatures on planet Earth that can bargain with the future. Yes. 100%. I'm going to make a sacrificial decision now. A hard decision now. That's so good, yes. To address my addiction. So because it's, I know it's going to benefit future Dwayne later. Yeah, uh, that's so good. Which yes. part of me knows it's going to benefit future Dwayne later? Maybe it's that judgmental father. Why is the father judgmental? Why does the father shine light? Well, we always say this too, like religion helps you bring a system in place. Absolutely. So you got chaos going on in your life? Yes. Get involved in a yes, church. Yes, absolutely. Our program or whatever. A- any, any path is a good path as long as you're touching spiritual principles. That vertical dimension, that father figure image, that part of me only wants the best for me. That's, that's what I'm getting in touch with when I'm bargaining with the future. So it's a great starting place. We it's don't hold great. any prejudice against any religion, and that's one that works for me. Yeah, 100%, and I think we all have. I have like a view of mystic Christianity and stuff like that, uh, Judaism. Everybody kind of has a mix of different things that they believe in or do. So for the next five minutes, let's get into some positive affirmations that people can do. Fantastic. And you're great at this. These are like, like great tools, bro. You're <laughs> yeah. great at this, too. You're great at this, too. Uh, but I, but I think you're ahead of me on this. Let's have a scale here. No, no. <laughs> on a scale of one to ten, I think I'm probably at a four, and you're at an eight. No, but um, So let's three. get into some affirmations real quick before we go. Um, what are some affirmations besides, you know, that's not real. I mm-hmm. use that one all the time. Mm-hmm. You, you taught that one to me and I love it. What are some of the affirmations that you use daily? So these are practical tools that help us navigate our day. Now, if I'm interested in going through the world, basically we like to say, I made a handshake commitment with the universe that I'm willing to feel good all the time. That's an affirmation. Th- that's an affirmation. It's also a radical idea. Most people will never make that commitment. But if I'm heading in the perfect objective, which is of higher self, I'm willing to make that handshake commitment. I want to feel good all the time. Not just when I get a Even paycheck, when you're in a foreign country? Not, even when I'm in a foreign country <laughs> on vacation. Not just when this is perfect. <laughs> I'll, I'll be using it. Trust me, I'm using the tools. Not, not just when I'm having sex. I, oh, I'll only yeah. feel good if I'm getting laid. Isn't it amazing how present we are only with f- an orgasm? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You're yeah. like pure presence. That circuitry, you're not thinking about it. That I, I hope old not. Also. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, you're not thinking about anything else. <laughs> like in that moment... You are not thinking about anything else. No, very present. And sorry, and I said that's okay. There. <laughs> that's, a, it's a, it, that's a nice practice as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> to bring, to bring us present. The, uh, so the handshake commitment with the universe is all the time. That's the radical piece. Not just when I'm orgasming, not just when I'm getting a paycheck, not just when things, oh, I got the green light at the traffic light. 
all the time. So it's independent of my outside circumstances. Right. So what I'm getting in touch with is my inner being, mm. my inner emotional intelligence. Uh, great affirmation. Um, great affirmation is thank you, God, for this moment. Thank you, God, for this moment. I use this every single day, multiple times a day, usually during cardio, but if I'm present enough, it's, it's with me <laughs> yeah, all that's the, the time. That's the struggle. There. Yeah, thank you, God, for this moment. Thank you, God, for this moment. Thank you, God, for this moment. I'm very interested in rewiring the neurological synapses that help create my identity. A belief is just the thought that you keep thinking. So our job now uh, with a spiritual development practice, a expansion practice is, well, start paying attention to your thoughts. That's the handshake commitment with the universe. If I'm going to feel good all the time, I need to start taking responsibility for the 60,000 60, thoughts a day that are kicking my ass. Thank you, God, for this moment is a thought. Thank you, God, for this moment opens the door for gratitude. Mm -hmm. I can start to vibrate at a level of, well, I'm just, I'm just appreciative for this moment. No matter what it looks like, independent of my outside circumstances. Very powerful. Another great one that has worked wonders for me is I am wildly successful. Not because of my bank account, but because I'm connected to the present moment. I'm wildly successful. And you're not lying to yourself because you're not an addict in the present moment. No. You're not Jason Rigby in the present moment. And I'm not poor either. No, you're nothing in the present look moment. At this, look at this abundance around me. I have abundance of air. I have abundance of sunshine. I have abundance of trees. I have abundance of access to loved ones. I have abundance to uh, navigating the world. I can get anywhere I want to get. Today, tomorrow, I could leave and go anywhere in the world I want to go. I have abundance all around me. Mm -hmm. I'm wildly successful. Not because of my bank account, but because I'm connected to the present moment. I'm reaffirming my identity. I'm tapping into the success that is around me, mm. and I'm heading in that direction. Yes, I love that. That's good. I'm infinitely abundant because I'm the flowering of consciousness. I'm not infinitely abundant because of dollar signs. I'm infinitely abundant, abundant because I'm the flowering of consciousness, because my consciousness is becoming more and more aware because that's the realm, that's the dimension that I want to be more and more in touch with, that I want in the forefront. I'm infinitely abundant. How abundant? Infinitely abundant. Because I'm the flowering of consciousness. Those mantras have served me so well. And there are countless other tools. Yeah, prayers, and there's like, you prayers, know, in their material we have, I am not defined by my addiction. What are some of yours? You um, have some I powerful use, Yeah, yeah. I use, I, I'm kind of more like in the, uh, uh, because of my ULPs, yes. I found those. And I encourage everybody to look that up. There's great articles just online if you type in upper limit problem. Yep. And so I have to say, you know, I am worthy of. Yes. Because I'm, I feel yes. like I'm not worthy of things. So I, I am worthy of success. I am worthy of a great relationship. I am yes. worthy. So I use the I am worthy. I like anything with I am because that's I am that I am. You know, that's what, mm -hmm. that's what that's God Jesus said. Yeah, yeah, I am that I am. That's his total present moment. So whenever I can say, you know, and it's, it's not like I'm saying false things to myself. It's like, you know, because my higher self, my true self is the I am. Absolutely. So you I believe are that. those things. Yeah, whether you're Christian, you believe the Holy Spirit relies in you. That Holy Spirit is part of the Trinity. That is the I am. Yes. So every religion has this, uh, this I am. You know, so that resides in me. So the minute that I can tap into the I am, I know that I have unlimited power. And we talk about it. It's the power that creates. Abraham takes us about this power that creates worlds. But I want to close in this. This is so important to do affirmations, and you're so great at this because. It breaks the ego's negative narrative. Yes. And that's so important. The ego has been giving you a storyline and a narrative for however many years old you are. So the affirmation breaks that. It, yeah. It breaks that, like just like that. It's powerful enough to heal generations in the past and generations in the future. The repetition of an affirmation can retrain my identity and rewire my mind. 